Our kitchen renovation started with selecting the perfect appliances, not realizing it would take over a year for them to arrive. With loads of anticipation, we started prepping for our range to arrive by DIYing our custom hood, all for the wrong one to arrive. Oh my God. Hello guys, welcome back to the cottage and episode eight of our kitchen renovation. I'm literally picking up this video right where I left off the last video. I was literally just talking to you guys about all of the finishing touches that the upper cabinets are going to need now that we have the boxes in and they need face frames and pieces of wood on the side to make it look good. And then we need to paint them. There's a lot of things that we still need to do, but there's also something really exciting happening this week. Actually tomorrow, they are delivering our oven range, range oven. It is Italian. It is very cottagey. <laughs> it is beautiful. We did order a year and a half ago, a Holman range. So we will see that first thing in the morning and to gear up for that and to work on a project that will help that function, the oven and range function, we are going to be DIYing our own range hood. I have some inspiration. I want to show you kind of the overall design I want to go with, and it's going to sit right here in the middle above, oh, <laughs> above, the, above the oven right here. We're gonna be doing a lot of building and a lot of painting because I feel like that's what the kitchen needs is a lot of building and a lot of painting. So first things first, I'm going to continue to work on the face frames and finishing out the upper cabinetry that we've already built. So I'm actually doing the face frames this time a little differently than I did the lower cabinets. So the lower cabinets, I built the face frames off. I kind of created this like two sides, a top, middle, and bottom kind of design. And I used pocket holes to assemble it all together. And then I just attached it to the cabinet. I'm doing it a little differently, still using two inch wide face frames so that it matches the bottom cabinets, but I'm actually just attaching them all separate. I picked up this trim. This is uh, MDF, so you can't get it wet. That this would be really nice underneath so that it doesn't look so squared off and flat. So we could do it in the front and then along the side here. It's the same old story. Also to the sides, I'm putting quarter inch plywood. It hides the pocket holes that we use to assemble it. It creates a consistent look from cabinet to cabinet. So if we were to leave that off, you would be able to see the joints in the cabinet and that would be super weird. So creating this like one panel all the way down and just seaming it where you have to match it together is so much cleaner of a look. was delivered but my feelings went from pure joy and happiness to panic the paper on the outside of this box says antique white and our oven's supposed to be stainless steel i don't know i'm smiling because i'm uncomfortable because <laughs> this took a year <laughs> and i just don't know i don't know I, I don't know. I mean, we don't know until we open it, but that's worrisome. All of my paperwork and everything and nowhere on it says antique white. Excuse my appearance, but we're opening it. I googled what an antique white home and range looks like. It's actually quite beautiful. 
Will this be a happy accident? Maybe. Will I panic? Maybe. We'll see. She goes, no, they definitely sent the wrong one. We're, we're gonna figure something out. She was gonna figure it out. Now this took over a year to get here and be made. They are made to order. So what could we possibly do at this point? Like we would have to be another year without an oven. I love it with the granite. I think the warmth, antique white, dusty white is like so beautiful together. This just became a statement oven. When before being stained with steel in color with the black brass accent, it was just, you know, a pretty oven, but it kind of blended in more. Now this just became, whoa. I FaceTimed my mom and she was like, give me that. <laughs> I was like, was this a happy accident or what? So we are gonna continue on, continue on. Yeah, that's, uh, that happened. Don't ever give a perfectionist a cock gun. I've said this before. I go crazy with this stuff. I want everything to be perfect. And all the wood glue to fill all the holes. She looks good. Like every hole is filled. Every seam is filled. I'm gonna give it a light sand. You guys, if I actually just figured out this crown molding, I'm going to just follow the floor. I did that. You see that up there? I think it's like once you get it in your head, it starts to make sense. Oh. <laughs> I did that. I, I did that. I take it back. Give a perfectionist a cock gun because they're gonna make every project look like a million bucks because this looks so good. So we are ready to move on to our next project, but before we do that, I really wanna get a, at least the primer on these cabinets so that we can start to get to a finish line on one project and then we can get a coat of paint on it. So a big thank you to Benjamin Moore for sponsoring today's video. It is no secret that I love Benjamin Moore paint. We have Benjamin Moore paint <laughs> in the whole house. Exterior, interior, and specifically in the kitchen, we have several different colors that are really coming together and complementing each other to create this beautiful space. So we have the island that we painted black by Benjamin Moore, and the windows that we painted black by Benjamin Moore as well. We also have the ceiling and the wall colors in here, which are gray mist by Benjamin Moore. So that brings in our light, off-white neutral palette in contrast to the Black Island. And then for the cabinetry and the coffee bar, we did Pashmina. And Pashmina is just such a chameleon color, I feel like if you pair it with more cool colors, it takes on a cool undertone. And then you can pair it with warm colors like our rich warm wood in here. And it takes on a warm color. It's just such a complimenting darker taupe. So I think using multiple paint colors in a space can really add dimension and interest but it's kind of scary because how do you know if they're all going to go together and how do you know with so many options of paint because benjamin moore has over 3500 unmatchable colors so with that many options you really need to make sure that they're all going to go together so i love to order sample sizes they're eight ounce samples and you can get them directly from benjaminmoore.com they're shipped directly to your door so i love to use these to the sample in the space to figure out what paint i want to paint a room but then i also keep these in my diy supplies to use for other projects 
projects because you never know when you're gonna need just a little bit of like an eight ounce thing of paint. Once I get the eight ounce samples in, I like to paint them on these boards and actually put them in the space put them up on the wall, look at them at all times of day, just like we did the entryway as well, because we were going with a more moody, daring color. So by seeing it in the space at all times of day with different shades of light, it really helps you be more confident in the paint color that you're selecting. Benjamin Moore also updated their website that actually shows you what the color looks like in a space. So it shows you at different times of day. So I love that Benjamin Moore is just helping us create spaces and use color in a really fantastic way by offering us all of these different ways to see it. As we were designing the kitchen, I was taking into consideration all of those paint choices that we were using throughout the house. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do pashmina up onto the upper cabinets and also the cabinet doors. And then for the hood, when we get there, I'm thinking I wanna do it gray mist but do like a heavy texture. Imagine the top part having a plaster texture and then gray mist being on top of it. We'll see how it goes today, <laughs> but I wanna get a coat of primer on these cabinets so we can get going. I start every paint project, exterior or interior, by priming. And I use Benjamin Moore's Fresh Start High Hiding Primer. And really the key that I found to painting cabinetry and getting that really smooth texture coat is light coats of paint, one coat primer, two coats paint, and then lightly sanding in between each coat. It came out so well. That's exactly what we're gonna do now. Once I prime too, I always find little holes that I missed and I can just go back and further perfect it in the next stage. Okay, that is all primed, so we'll let that dry. And then we can put the first coat of pashmina on it. So for cabinetry, I like to use Benjamin Moore's Advance line. It's more durable and cabinets get touched a lot. So this is a great paint for that. I also like to up the sheen a little bit. So I use satin on the cabinetry. So I stayed up last night reading all the instruction booklets, operating, installation instructions, just try, trying to wrap my head, since I've never done this before, I watched some videos and then also just tried to wrap my head around our specific hood and what it was going to need. So last night I kind of took the hood apart, if you will, just to see how it was, you know, made and <laughs> stuff. So this is our hood insert. So this is what goes over your oven that you turn on to blow out, you know, the steam and smoke and smell and all of that stuff. So this is one part of it. And then there's another part that's the blower. Here is the blower. So one of the very first things my mom said to me when I was doing uh, all of my appliance ordering, she was like, put your blower in your attic, put your blower outside, put your blower somewhere, not in your house, because it's loud. If you've ever turned on your vent hood and it's just like, and you can barely hear yourself think, um, that's pretty much what it does. So this one specifically came in three options. It had the option to have the blower in the unit and then it just vented right outside your house, which would be loud. And they also had the option of the blower being inside the unit. So right here, still loud, but then it revents or recirculates the air back into your house. So it kind of blows out. Or the third option was to have the blower completely separate and you can put it wherever you want it. Um, so basically, this is going to go up through the attic, outside the house. So we are basically building something decorative. The hood itself attaches to the wall. So it's not gonna, what we're designing today and what we're building today, today is not structural to the hood at all. It's purely what makes it look nice and what encases the hood. I am going to be cutting a lot of two by fours and we're gonna be building a frame. <laughs> so basically we're building a two by four box. And I think how my brain is working this out is that we're gonna have like three two by four boxes to create this frame and you will see what I mean. So I'm gonna use my 90 degree angle clamps and just my multi-purpose screws that I really like. They're really strong, you can use them in framing. We 
we have a two by four box. Now I'll show you what I think I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> that one's gonna work. Okay, so essentially what we made, hoping, hoping it fits, is a frame, a box frame that fits and should fit right around the hood. And I think we accomplished that. <laughs> yeah, we did. Okay, Romeo gave the cabinet a nice light sand. Feels really smooth, so it's ready for the first coat. So we're gonna go in with Pashmina now. find the center between the windows. So the center of the hood, the center of the oven, everything in the center. And also the center of the box I just made out of two by fours so that I can line those two things up. What's half of 35 and a half? <laughs> Math. 17 and three quarters. Okay, I'm gonna put the laser level right on that. Same multi-purpose screws and screw this box into the studs. And then I'm also gonna attach it to the ceiling somehow. I just don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. Totally gonna use my head. Hey guys, it's a new day. So I actually, yesterday when I was making these boxes, I made them an inch too short. I was like, okay, my brain is not functioning anymore. I need to take a break. So I remade them the right size. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Why are these this size? I thought half of this box was supposed to be 17 and a half or 17 and a three quarters. Okay, got the bottom brace in. So since this two by four box actually is going to touch the hood, so when it slides in, I'm gonna make a quarter inch kind of face frame to go underneath. Um, so I was measuring exactly what we need. So essentially this is what our face frame is gonna look like. This in the center is gonna be hollow. So it's just gonna trim out this bottom piece so it's not two by fours. And then we can paint it, like prime and paint it, before we put the hood in. So it's just like a nice clean thing. I'm also gonna add on both sides and the front, uh, the thickness of the sheetrock that we're gonna be putting up so that it kind of sits there and it gives us kind of a guide, so. So we are using a Fire Guard X drywall. Dimensionally stable gypsum core is reinforced with glass fibers, increasing its strength and fire resistance. So since we were gonna be using this over the stove, we have a gas stove, so it's a real flame. <laughs> it's not electric. So I figured this was gonna be the best way to go. I don't know if this is normal. Just, I just researched a little bit, and I don't know if this is normally what they put there, but I felt like it couldn't hurt. And it slows down the spread of fire if there is any. I also ordered another piece because we're gonna be patching the drywall around the fireplace too. So wherever those things were, I was like, I think that this is gonna be the better way to go. I think it's three quarters of an inch. Nope, half inch. I went with half inch so it was lighter. So we're gonna add a half inch to our dimensions. So the inside of the width is gonna be 32 and a half. The exterior side of the width is 36. And then the depth, 21 and a half on the inside and 25 and an eighth on the outside. Some other things so I made a new box we're gonna go this route that you know what would have been even better is if I did this bottom one out of two by sixes 
I think. That would have made it wider and it would have given me more play here instead of making two boxes. <laughs> that this is sturdy. I'm a little nervous, but you know. Nice. There you go. Okay, we're ready to hang the vent hood inside, but I'm gonna prime this face frame with the Benjamin Moore Fresh Star Primer. One of you guys actually told me that when I was doing the cabinets, that you guys were like, go ahead and paint and prime your walls because it keeps kitchen smells from developing, you know, like kind of holding on in your drywall. So I'm essentially gonna do the, <laughs> I'm thinking the same logic here, making sure that this is primed and then we'll just tape it off and paint it when we do all of the, you know, plaster look and stuff. But okay guys, it's happening. <laughs> We're putting it in. Romeo is gonna hand me oh, the jigsaw. This is an old air conditioning vent. It was already a hole in the ceiling, so I tried to take advantage of, of all of those things in those moments so we didn't have unnecessary holes to fill. But what I need to do is cut it bigger. I have a joist here that I can't go uh, cut through. I don't know if my jigsaw will get closer than that. How far do you think I need to go this way? Like this, for, yeah, right here. Okay, are we gonna get be able to get that pipe in that way or should I drop it from here? This, right? Look at that. Yeah. Okay, it's time for sheetrock. Romy and I just cut the pieces that we needed for both sides and the front. And I have drywall screws. I have inch and a quarter, which I think is more than enough actually, because this is only half inch. We're gonna hang some sheet rock. Have I done that before? No. I've done like small pieces, but not sheets. When the sheetrock guys were here, they left some things behind. <laughs> well, I save everything. So I save these corner pieces, how they made a, like a super sharp corner in the, in the drywall. And that too. <laughs> Isn't that great for us? <laughs> okay, so I picked up some trim from the hardware store to kind of create the bottom portion of the hood that I want or the finished look I want. So we refer back to the inspiration picture. It kind of has like a, a ring around the bottom uh, in detail. And then it has the crown molding piece that's kind of creating a shelf, right? So I want to do that, but in my own way. And so first piece I picked up was this corner trim, which I feel like is going to be the perfect piece to camouflage the seam between the sheetrock and the wood. But then I didn't want it to just be flat and straight. So I picked up this that I've actually used a couple of times and you see it has like a pretty profile. So I wanna put that right on top of the corner trim. Cool look, you know, like a little bit of a bevel. And then we'll do the top, maybe go up about 10 inches or so and do the crown molding. I haven't exactly figured out how I'm gonna do this yet. The front's pretty straightforward, you know, because you can just go out like a crown molding piece 
The side is where I'm struggling. We'll start with the corner trim and the pretty bottom ones. And go from there. Okay, it is plaster day. I think that there's a lot of ways I could have done this. I could have gone with a lime wash, which is a really pretty visual, um, but I actually wanted it to be dimensional in like, after, like real life too. So I wanted more of a, a texture, a real texture. Some people do Venetian plaster. I don't know. I was at the hardware store and I saw a plaster of Paris. <laughs> I'm like, let's do that. That might be what they use actually. Um, so I did not know that this dries super fast. So it sets hard in 20 to 30 minutes and has a working time of only six to 10. So we have to do this in small batches because I don't know what kind of texture I'm gonna want. Maybe we build on it. I got a bucket. I have a joint knife, which I think is gonna come in handy for some texture. I also have a trowel, which is gonna come in handy for some texture. A cup to mix and do the portions of our plaster. I'm actually excited that it dries fast. Also nervous. It's two parts plaster of Paris to one part cold water. Ooh, it's like flour. That's one, two. Okay, we're gonna pour in one part cold water. Oh my gosh, I'm splattering. Okay, we're going for it. I'm just gonna, I don't know. <laughs> I made it. A had thicker, it looked a little thin. Maybe my portions were off, so I put a little bit more in it. It's still kind of runny. Ah! 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 I made a mess! I'm making a mess! Oh, this is not, no. Okay, I made it thicker, like a three part plaster of Paris to one part water. It's way, I'm never, it's gonna fall on the, all fall on the floor. See, now it's like that. It's still a little liquid, but it's not gonna like much better. Yeah, three to one for sure. It's the same old story being told inside my head. I'm too shy to straighten up my head. Okay, so when I say I made a mess, I made a mess. This is a messy prog process. So I actually cut some quarter inch plywood. So it's super thin um, so that we could put them like this, right? Like that. And then on top of it, with our foam molding on the top. As I was putting the coat of primer on the hood that we built, I started to second guess myself. I was like, oh, wait, should this be all painted the same color? Should it be a mixture? Should it be something else? And I think that as this kitchen has evolved, it's kind of taken on its own life. And 
So every little piece that we add is a little bit closer to its finished product. So we're, I'm starting to see like the vision that I had just in my head come to life and it's looking like better in a lot of ways, different in some ways. So it's kind of morphing and obviously went ahead and primed it with a fresh start primer and then put the gray mist in eggshell, which is the same as the wall color. And the reason I did this is that was my original design direction. I want it to feel light, even though it's this big, huge box that's coming down from the ceiling. I want it to still feel light and airy in here. I don't want it to be so like large and like, like daunting, like hanging over you. So that's why my idea to paint it the same color as the wall color was still a great idea because it would make it feel lighter. We can't really make a final decision about the hood color because I don't have the cabinet doors up. I feel like I need to see it. So I went ahead and finished it out in all gray mist. I'm gonna continue with the cabinet doors. That's what we're working on next. The drawers and building all of those and actually having real organization in the kitchen. And then once we get the cabinet doors on the cabinets, which are gonna be in pajamina, which is the darker taupe, then I can step back from it and be like, okay, will it be pretty pajamina? Is it gorgeous like it is? Is it, you know, so I think we can make decisions, fine tuning decisions further down the line. But I did start to second guess myself. So I'm just here to tell you it's okay to change your mind. It's okay for, you know, things to kind of morph and, and turn into something that you didn't initially expect. <sighs> this was a big week. That was a big project to accomplish. I still do have to build that side. <laughs> I, will not bo I won't bore you with that side. Uh, I'll bore you over on the vlog channel with that side because we just have three more upper cabinets and the kitchen cabinetry is completed, which is crazy to say. I also hope to hear something about our stove, range, oven situation. I don't know what's gonna come of this. I haven't heard anything yet but you'll be the first to know <laughs> when I do. And also a big question that I've been getting from you guys is if I'm going to do tile, and obviously I think we need it, right? I wasn't sure. Up until this point, I really wasn't sure if we were going to do tiling. I honestly didn't know how much space we were gonna have. I couldn't picture all of that in my head. So I did not pick tile, but obviously we need tile here, right? Going down beyond the top of the oven and then underneath the windows and then all the way over here. And then probably over on that side as well. I'm thinking yes, but I have not picked it. I don't know what it would be. So that we're gonna have to do too. We're making progress. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys now see that it's totally possible to um, DIY your hood. I have never done that before. I didn't know that it was possible for me to accomplish but I did it and it was actually um, easier than I expected. So that's a plus. I will see you guys again on my vlog channel for two more vlogs this week uh, for more behind the scenes and shopping. Obviously we have to go look for tile now, so you'll see that over there and another renovation video next Sunday. You like it this color, huh? Yeah, Romeo really likes it, this like light color. You know what it's giving me? It's giving me like a black-white contrast. If you look from this angle, you see how it's black on bottom, white on top. You see how it's kind of like giving that contrast? And I'm not too into that. We will see.